Hello friends, welcome back to the blended learning mode of mushroom cultivation and mod marketing. Myself, I'm Lakshmi Sreguma. I'm working as assistant professor of botany in KSMDB College. So this is about the last section of mushroom cultivation and marketing, that is harvesting, storage and marketing. In the previous classes, we were discussing about the life cycle of agaricus and we studied the life cycle very briefly. We know that agaricus is one of the most common mushroom cultivated in India. It is commonly known as button mushroom. Formerly, the cultivation was limited only during the winter season. But because of technological advancement, nowadays it is cultivated throughout India. The basidium spores of agaricus will germinate to form the primary mycelium, which later forms the fruiting body. Now let us see how the spawns are prepared. Food grains like sorghum, rice, wheat and rye are used to make the spawns. The cooked grains are pressed on sterile cloth. It's decanted and mixed with 2% calcium carbonate powder. Then it is taken in aseptic glass bottles plucked with cotton and incubated at 25 degrees celsius for 10 to 12 days now after 10 to 12 days we can see that the mycelium grows by infecting the grain now what is the spawn the mycelium that grows on the grain is known as the spawn now let us see what are the compost used the substrates of plant waste like straw sugarcane bagasse then coconut husk, all this can be used, but it should be mixed with certain substances like urea, cotton seed, and gypsum salt to make a good compost. So spawning is the mixing up of compost with the spawns. There are different types of spawning, spot spawning, surface spawning, and layer spawning. So after spawning, the compost is sprinkled with water and relative humidity is maintained at 70 to 80%. Now after 7 to 8 days, we can see that button sized knob like structures are produced from the surface of the compost. These are actually the immature button mushrooms. Now about the harvesting. After few weeks, the mushrooms will be mature and we can harvest the mushroom. The mushroom is harvested when the cap is tied with its stalk. It is slightly pressed to compost and twisted gently. The harvested mushrooms are either used for cooking or it can be stored at 40 degrees Celsius for future use. Now, the next stage is preservation. Which are the different methods for preservation? Basically, there are two kinds of preservation of mushrooms, short-term preservation and long-term preservation. The main purpose of preservation is to store the mushroom and to improve its shelf life. So what are the different types of short-term preservation, bagging by controlled atmosphere, by low temperature treatment? These are the different types of short-term preservation. In bagging, in this method, we cover the mushrooms with a PVC film to increase the shelf life for 5 to 7 days. And in controlled atmosphere, the atmospheric conditions are or the mushrooms are kept in atmo uh, atmosphere having controlled conditions like 9% oxygen and 25% carbon dioxide. And in low temperature treatment, the mushrooms are packed in wooden containers having three compartments. The central compartment will be filled with ice and mushrooms are kept on the first and the last compartment that is on the two sides of the central compartment. It is stored at 10 to 15 degrees Celsius so that we can store the mushrooms for a short time. So all these are examples of short term preservation. Now let us move on to the long-term preservation method. There are different types of long-term preservation method. The most common one is blanching. Blanching is one of the earliest methods of mushroom preservation. It is used to preserve large amounts of mushroom. It can prevent the discoloration. First of all, the mushrooms are washed with water and uh, the soil particles are thereby removed it is then cleaned carefully and then the mushrooms are put in boiling water for two to three minutes now it is taken and kept in ice water to prevent the leaching loss this will arrest the enzyme activity so stoppage of enzyme activity in mushroom will prevent the soppiness in mushrooms and this blanching is used uh, for long-term preservation and these type of preserved mushrooms are commonly used in soups, stews and for pasta making. 
the limitation is the quantity of mushrooms to be blanched is limited. The second process of long term preservation is steeping. In steeping, the mushrooms are soaked in liquid to clean and soften it. The main purpose is to saturate the mushrooms evenly. It is washed, cut into pieces. The mushrooms are carefully washed initially. It's cut into smaller pieces and immersed in different types of steeping solutions. There are different types of steeping solutions. We can prepare steeping solutions out of vinegar using potassium beta sulfate salt and citric acid. The glass vessel with the mushroom is sealed tightly. The next method is dehydration. We all know dehydration is a common method, that is the removal of water. Sun drying can be commonly used for dehydration. Then canning, pickling and freeze drying. These are the different types of preservation methods. In pickling, the mushrooms are immersed in preservatives and the preservatives include brine solution, acidic solution, sugar and vinegar solution. Freeze drying is of course the last method of long-term preservation. In freeze drying, we immerse the mushrooms in a solution of 0.05% sodium metasulfate and 2% salt for 30 minutes followed by cooling. So this is about the history, uh, sorry, the harvesting, storage and marketing of mushrooms. I hope you all understood about it. I tried to explain about all these freeze processes very briefly. So thank you so much. Thank you for attending this class.